Hello, hello, I'm Shay, I like to make things, and this week, instead of doing a new project, I'm gonna be showing you everything that I've made in the past 10 years. So, we're gonna get out of the studio and go up to my attic, where I keep everything. Let's go. Before we get to the costumes, let me first show you where I store everything. So I always say like, I'm gonna go put stuff in the attic, but this is the attic. Before it was floored, it looked like back there, but I floored this half of the attic to build my own little costuming nook. So this is where I store all my costumes once they're done. I try and keep all the gowns and hanging stuff and these like hangers that I got, but a lot of the stuff I make is not super hangable. So it ends up either in boxes or trash bags or anywhere. Anastasia, this is my Rapunzel braid. This is a lot of stuff. I'm gonna go through and pull out some of the pieces that I think are the coolest or the stuff that shows my journey the most and we'll bring them downstairs to talk. So it is all set up on these lovely little racks and this is gonna be a walk through everything I've made in the past 10 years, partially to show some of the fun stuff I've made, but also because I just think it's fun to see where people come from. I started creating in cosplay, so a forewarning, there's a lot of cosplay in costumes, but the 20 different anime costumes walked so that the red carpet dresses could run. Starting with the very first costume I made before I even knew what cosplay was, Cinder. So this is actually not even a cosplay from a, like, pop culture or media or anything. Oh, this is the leg. It's from the book Cinder, which I was obsessed with. And I made this to go to a book signing. Again, the nerdiest thing you can do. But I got into cosplaying when Frozen came out. I was 14 at the time and I saw Anna's coronation dress and I was just obsessed with it. And this was also before I knew how to sew. I just really wanted this dress, so I tried making it. This top is actually made from my brother's old curtains. Um, Christmas ribbon and just like random stuff I had from around the house. It ended up taking me two and a half months to make this and it was my first big sewing project. So this one I actually made my own DeviantArt cosplay tutorial and that was my very first tutorial I've ever made. On to 2015. I started getting more into cosplay and I made my first couple cosplays to wear to conventions, mostly from the show Ruby. This is Nora and some of her pieces. And if you're wondering why my username is Crescent Shay, I started my cosplay account when I was cosplaying Ruby and Ruby Rose's weapon was called Crescent Rose. And so my original tag was Crescent Rose Cosplay and eventually changed to Crescent Shay. But that's where the Crescent came from. I didn't make too much in 2016. The biggest thing was probably Sheik's Hark from The Legend of Zelda. But 2016 was the year I really started making crafting YouTube tutorials. I was posting weekly then, which is crazy. In 2017, I've been sewing for a couple of years and I finally had the confidence to start trying more complicated projects. And I was getting into Yuri on Ice but I decided to try making this really detailed lace dress based on a look from the show. The more detailed the gown is, the more expensive it usually ends up being. This was yards and yards of beaded lace that I just could not afford. So all of this lace is actually from a thrifted wedding dress that I dyed blue and put it onto my dress. This is also the project where I met my best friend at. She was working at the fabric store when I bought the fabric for this dress. 2017 was also the year I started to realize that I was good enough at sewing that if I wanted something, I could just make it. So I started just making a lot of stuff. I made my Belle dress. Every little girl's wanted to make their own Disney princess dress and Belle was always my favorite princess. Fun fact, this bodice was actually sewn during my English final. And now we move on to Shay's hyperfixation era where I would literally get obsessed with one show. And now that I had the skills to make cosplay, I would just make 20 different cosplays from that show. So the 2017, 2018 hyperfixation was Voltron. I call it my cringe era, but it still holds a very special place in my heart because it's where I made a lot of my like lifelong friends. 2018 was the year that I truly started going stupid, going crazy. I just realized I could make things. So I started to make everything from whatever I was excited about. But one of the biggest ones I made was Rapunzel's Brain. This went from just like, not just people within the Disney fandom, but also like people in general thought this was a very cool project. After that Rapunzel braid, my page really started picking up. I was still in college sewing in the dorms, but this was starting to become bigger than just a hobby. I kept making cosplays, but all of a sudden there were a lot more people watching me make cosplays. 
and that messes with the brain. <laughs> Being honest here, I started struggling with anxiety a lot, so much so that I actually ended up taking a break and going to therapy. And it helped! Um, it helped so much that, surprise surprise, even after coming back from my little break, I've been going to therapy consistently for the past four years. And because of that, mental health and therapy have become really important to me, which is one of the reasons why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's whole goal is to make therapy accessible and affordable. Finding a therapist can be really hard, especially when you're limited to who's in your area. So BetterHelp makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's super easy to get signed up and match with a therapist. Just click the link in my description. It's BetterHelp slash Crescent Shea. Clicking that link helps to support this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and just try it out to see if it helps you. I don't really talk about it much here but I struggle a lot with anxiety and the big sad and therapy has been the biggest thing that's helped me figure out how to get through life when I'm just like having a tough time. I really do believe in therapy and in the importance of mental health so if you're struggling consider trying online therapy with BetterHelp. Thank you again BetterHelp for supporting this channel and for making projects possible. Well, with all that said let's continue down our little timeline of cosplays where we left off in 2019. Truly, I really lucked out that I had gotten the mental health stuff sorted because it was about to get crazy. I ended up making a TikTok. Anastasia was the first project on TikTok that started really blowing up. And from there, it was just project after project. Right after Anastasia, I made the bell shoes, which was even bigger than Anastasia by like tenfold. Um, and I started getting a little funkier with the stuff I was making. It wasn't just cosplays anymore. It was like anything I wanted to make. So moving on. The pandemic hits, I'm sent home from college. All of a sudden I'm home with a bunch of fabrics and no college or free time and a bunch of free time. And I just start making stuff. I made my Barbie dresses during this time. These have been dream cosplays for a while of mine. I was also not 14 anymore and I finally had a bit of money so I could start making some of my dream costumes. And I made Effie's butterfly dress from the Hunger Games. And then I did my first big original design, the social distancing dress. It ended up being my most viral project ever. <laughs> People wanted to see that. They didn't just want to see recreations or stuff based on media. And I started just making my own original concepts. I made a frog coat. I made this rainbow flower dress. And the gradient is just very satisfying to me. The shape of it is just very satisfying to me. It makes my brain happy. I'm still doing cosplays and recreations. I made um, Princess Diana's dress. I did a Billy's Met Gala look. I made Jessica Rabbit for Halloween in 2021. I made big hip pads. I started trying new techniques. And then I really went crazy and drilled 2,000 pennies into a dress. Again, another like big creative challenge. It's more about like, what am I going to make? What am I going to learn? Rather than just like, oh, I am obsessed with this character and I want to just make every version of them. 2022, AKA Shay's silicone era. I made my octopus shoes, which was a whole thing. Did my very first fashion show with a fully silicone doc ock look. Like again, a bunch more original designs for red carpets. Thor, She-Ra, Hawkeye. So mixed in some like cosplay in there with Cruella and Night Eye and other things. And then that brings us to 2023, this year, where I've made, again, some cosplay stuff. Like, I guess if worms can be considered cosplay, worms. Coco Me, which is my most recent one, but then also like some other fun, crazy stuff like the dress of a thousand phone cases and like some of my upcoming projects like maybe like making a mermaid tail or a vegetable dress. I don't know. And I haven't stopped cosplaying. It's just not something I put on my public account anymore. A lot of it's over on Shea Roses, my second Instagram. I still do my little hyperfixation cosplays, but I just tend to focus more of like my public facing stuff as my arts and my DIYs and my crafting. After 10 years of making dresses, I've kind of found that my favorite part of it is always just the learning and the trying new things. So that has been like the past 10 years years in costumes in looks in everything I make um, thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed learning about what I've done and I will see you next time bye bye